20. I'm 28. I'm from Prince Edward, New Jersey. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> My childhood was weird. I mean, you know, regular, like, Dominican household. Everything was regular, but, like, you know, I went through a lot in my childhood. You you was raised in a household with your stepfather. Your father didn't live with y'all. Mm-mm. Yeah. And how, like, how was that, though? You it was like, weird. I always felt like I wasn't his child. Like, me and my dad, we clicked. Like, we the same. We had the same type of personality. He's very understanding. He's very funny. So if I was raised with my father, I would have felt like, I would have been like a regular girl. Like I wouldn't have been like a girl that's like having issues, father issues, like not really being loved correctly. Always finding love in men and stuff like that. How's your relationship with your mother? It's very good, but at first we used to have problems. I used to be rebellious because I used to feel like she didn't have my back <clears throat> growing up with certain things that happened to me. I feel like, you know, she was alone in this country, you know, her husband was the one who brought her here. So she didn't really have a voice. So like when I used to go through things, she used to just let me go through it by myself. Anything that specifically happened to you that you felt like your mother didn't have your back? Um, I was molested when I was five. By who? By my stepfather's brother. It affected everything. Like I try to forget what happened, but I always had like bad dreams. Even when like I'm dealing with men, I used to be like feeling weird. Like I always was the type of person that know how to detach myself from a situation. I used to feel like like lost. As I got older, I feel like you know the more I talk, the more it be therapeutic. Cause I never got therapy for any of it. Me and my mom didn't even had this conversation until I got older. And um, once I started talking to people about it, and I started being more open. That's when me and my mom had that conversation. And the first thing she tells me is like, yo, forget about it. Like it happened when you was young, but you can never forget when you go through that type of trauma in your life. I was five. And a lot of that has, has to do with you not having that, yeah. that fatherly That concern. father, the trauma. What about that life attracted you? The money. Cause I was making well, when I used to be working in the mall, my check used to be $300 every two weeks. And the more people got to know who I was, I'm making 1000 2000 3000 5000 Shit, on a good night, 10 or even more. Once you meet a guy in a strip club, it's just like, that's all they got, like, the money. Like, that's how they trying to, you know, sell, your, sell you with, with the money, sell your eyes with the money. They don't really have a good personality. A lot of these men are like, they're not really good guys. You know, it's hard to really date when you're a bartender too because they're looking at what you do. Like a lot of men don't like that you're a bartender for one. They don't like that you're being sexy on the ground. If you're too sexy, it's a problem. They feel like you're accessible for everybody else. My days is like, making sure my body's looking right. So I'm going to the gym, I'm going to the spa, I'm getting my body contoured. Um, I'm pursuing music, so I'm really trying to get good at my craft. I'm not a fighter, but if I had a fight, I'd fight. You're not, you're not a troublemaker? I'm not a troublemaker. I try to stay away from trouble, but if it finds me, I'm gonna have to handle it, because I ain't no fuck ass bitch. <laughs> <laughs> What about party? Do you like the party? I like the party. Are you the, the life of the party? Or you I am the life of the party. I get a little too lit. You get lit. Yeah. <laughs>